there's a reason for everything. It's very hard to believe that when you're going through stuff, but as long as you have breath in you, then you still have a purpose. My name is Ketchy, I'm 29 years old. I'm a singer and a speaker, and I'm also an advocate for burn survivors. I was born in Nigeria, in West Africa. My childhood was really happy. I was a very active child. <laughs> My accident happened when I was 16 years old. I went to a boarding school. Semester was over, fall semester, and we were heading home for Christmas. Nothing unusual. The plane started shaking like a whole lot to the point where people started kind of panicking. My next memory after that is hearing this like, nails on chalkboard, like scraping sound that just kind of jarred my brain, my senses, I blacked out. And then I opened my eyes and it's five weeks later and I'm opening my eyes from a coma. I definitely encounter people who stare. I encounter people who are very outspoken and just like, what happened to you? What is going on? Like, what, what's all this? Like, why do you look this way? Music was just this escape. Don't you dare give up on tomorrow. Don't you dare tell your dreams goodbye. We can it was it my ultimate distraction from everything that was going on in my life. The one thing that was not painful, that's what music was. Though the world may turn against you, don't believe the lie that no one cares. Don't but no matter how much I loved it, I didn't see it as a possible career choice, mainly because of how different I looked. I felt like if I wanted to get into Hollywood, it would be so difficult because I didn't look the right way for that industry. When I decided to join the worship team at church, I told myself that I was being brave. But honestly, that bravery was extremely controlled. I only exercised it within an environment that I considered a safe space. That was as far as I was gonna take music. Putting myself out there was just so risky for me, you know, I just felt like I didn't want to expose myself, this thing that I love so much, to like the like judgment of other people, you know, and fear, really, of not being accepted, fear of being judged. But then my friend signed me up for America's Got Talent without telling me because she knew that I would never do it on my own. So she took a chance on me. She put me out there. She believed in me in a way that I still struggle to believe in myself. I didn't think that people would accept my appearance, even if my voice was good enough. I had to combat myself constantly throughout that process. Everything that I was telling myself about myself. I don't belong here. I didn't earn this spot. It's just because of my story. I shouldn't be here. It was a very difficult thing to get out of my head and realize that I am literally standing on a stage where people are waiting to hear me sing, where people are waiting to hear me do what I love to do. The response from people, like, wildly positive and encouraging and, if I'm being honest, very validating. When I realized after the show that people actually want to hear what I have to say, want to hear my own sound, it really encouraged me. You ready? I think that this platform is a privilege. I want people to know that there is life after trauma. There is life after obstacles. There is a lot to look forward to after that thing that's holding you back, holding you down. I want people to know that they can definitely overcome difficult things if they keep pushing. This is the place that gave me back my life. Uh, Shriners, I was here from 2007 to 2012. I owe them a lot and uh, I do what I can to give back and um, encourage other patients that were just like me. 
this is where I spend most of my time, this exact room. This is the actual music room. Like, even if I was in like the worst pain ever, it didn't matter. Like, once I got here, I could just forget about all that and uh, just have fun singing. This place is a happy place for me. I tell the kids that they still have so much life to look forward so to. It's still what you make of it, no matter what you've gone through. I'm so glad to meet you in person. You are a trooper. How are you guys doing? You want to give up? Just take it one day. Yeah, that's all you can do. That's all you can do. You want to give up? Yes! All right. You're the man. Out of 109 people aboard that plane, only two people survived. And I was one of those two people. And that has to count for something. My vision for the future is a world where we as human beings are kinder to each other, but more importantly, kinder to ourselves.